Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. I'm here with part two of the ninth week of this series. And in this episode, I'm going to be looking at the hand we just looked over through my opponent's eyes, and we're going to try to figure out what he should do better in this hand. So right here, preflop, I think this is actually an error to call. So I open to uh, 2.5 big blinds, Jay Cardshark does, which is me. And then... I our, I guess he's our hero now, and the big blind elects to call with 8-6 suited. Um, you know, right here he is getting great odds preflop with 8-6 suited, but being out of position against a fairly tight range and a good player, I think you just need to be folding these sort of junkier suited connectors. If he had something like 10-9 of spades, I'd say calling's fine, but 8-6 um, is just going to be a little bit too weak. You're not going to flop a hand like top pair that you're going to be happy uh, going with often enough. So I, I think folding here preflop is going to be the right play the vast majority of the time. So our opponent gets top pair. It comes 8-3-2 with one spade. That one spade is always very important because it will give you some backdoor draws, which can give you a lot of equity in the hand. Right here, Jay Cardshark bets 1,800, and I think the uh, Kumcha player only has two options. He can either go all in or he can call. If he calls here, he needs to be very willing to go on a lot of turns as a bluff. Like, say, any spade comes on the turn, or any card that gives him a gut shot, like a 4 or a 5, come on the turn, he needs to be check-raising a ton. So if he does decide to play the hand this way thus far, I think he has to be making some moves. And he calls. So I don't really hate his play, but, again, it's... Um, Check-shoving is good if you think Jay Cardshark's preflop range is relatively wide. Like, say you think Jay Cardshark's raising hands like King-10 suited and Queen-Jack suited and, you know, 10-9, stuff like that, then I think check-shoving is very good. But if his range consists of mostly hands like Aces, Kings, Queens, and Ace-King, I think calling is significantly better. And, um, unfortunately for him, he probably doesn't know what Jay Cardshark's range is, because my range fluctuates quite... It fluctuates a lot based on the table and my stack size. So, in this spot, honestly, I'm going to show up with some pretty great hands when I'm raising from early positions, seeing how everyone's pretty short, but my opponent probably doesn't know that. And if, he, if my range is very tight, I like the check call. So he does turn one of these sort of like nut turn cards for him, where he now has a gut shot and a bunch of spade draw, a bunch of spades and an eight or six. So, check shoving here is never really going to be that bad, because Jay Cardshark's going to fold out a lot of his air. However, Jay Cardshark doesn't really have any air here. If, if he knows anything about my game, I am never, ever, ever betting this turn with anything worse than, like, ace-queen of spades, or ace-jack of spades. I think that would be my absolute worst hand to bet here, and anything else I'm betting is going to be nines or better, and that's it. Like, I'm going to have sets, nines, or ace-king of spades, or ace-queen of spades, or king-queen of spades, something like that. A very good flush draw. And... Given that's the case, I'm going to be calling off with a lot of those hands as well, because I'm getting pretty good odds to call against basically anything. So, this is a spot where my opponent actually does not have a lot of fold equity, which is sort of cool, seeing as, you know, everyone's sort of taught throughout their poker career, whenever you have a hand with a lot of fold equity, you need to be check-shoving it, or, you know, putting pressure on your opponent, trying to gain fold equity. But if you have no fold equity and none is possible to gain, check-shoving is usually not the best play. So right here, I think my opponent should actually check call and then check fold every river he misses and check every river he hits besides the five, in which case if he gets the five, he should probably just go all in himself because um, if Jay, Jay Carter is going to check back his whole range on the five river, so you're never going to be able to get value if you check. So in this spot, I think check calling is going to be best, and that's purely because there's no fold equity fold equity to be had here. Jay Cardshark does make the call with pocket jacks, as you see, because he's always going to have, like, nines or better, and he's not folding any of those. And, um, Kumcha loses the pot. Notice if Kumcha just called, he still would have had, uh, 10,000 chips left. And that's certainly nothing to throw in the trash whenever you have 20 big blinds. I mean, 20 big blinds is pretty huge, and there's no reason at all to throw that money away. And it's not necessarily getting thrown away, because he does have a ton of outs, but... 
this is one of those spots where I think you're much better off just calling and trying to get there. This is something that I've talked about recently in my webinar on floatthetern.com. Every month I do a webinar where players get online and ask me questions and I answer them live. Um, and if you want to get into that, you can just uh, sign up to floatthetern.com. It's my tournament training site. I definitely suggest everyone at least look into it. Um, and there are some free poker videos on there as well if you like what you're seeing here. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to let me know. And if you'd like to send in a hand history for me to go over, feel free to send it in. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.